harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. We're back! Here we are, Mr. Dom. Billy, you've taken your shoes off again. Another great sign of comfort between friends. I felt a certain heat in the room. Yeah. And I felt like my feet had to breathe. In electricity, maybe. Or you're turning yourself on. Or yeah, up. I'm turning myself up. And you. I'm not taking my shoes off because I'm, I'm taking great joy in these shoes today. Look at that. Are they from the future? Aren't they great? They what? are a little bit like moon boots. Like if I was doing a job, say for instance, and I lived on the moon, and they said, would your character wear these? I'd say, yeah, he yeah. would. Yeah, they look, they look cool. Have you seen that fantastic Duncan Jones film, Moon? I have, Dom. It's Sam, very, very Sam good. Rockwell living on the moon. But he doesn't wear shoes like that. No, he doesn't. He wears a lot of uh, astronauty type stuff. But what a, what a wonderful film that is. Who makes those shoes? I, d- I actually don't know because I got these shoes from Instagram. So when I was scrolling through my feed, it will start to throw up things that it thinks you might want to buy. And a lot of it for me is like unique and strange flower pots because I do a lot of gardening and have a lot of, you know, like strange indoor flower pots. Right. And weird shoes because I do a lot of searches for shoes. This came up. I was like, yeah, okay, I'll buy those. I can't remember the company. Chinese, I think. Wow. They're amazing. I like like Chinese. I like that song from Monty Python. I like their tiny little trees. (laughs) I think those are really incredible shoes. Well Well done, Dom. You can loan them whenever you want, or is it borrow? I never know which one it is. Uh, It would be borrow. You can borrow them whenever they want, although I think, are your your feet a little smaller than mine? I would think so. Look at the size of your feet. I'm a 10. A 10, is that all? Yeah, what are you? A 9. Not too bad. Well, I thought you'd be bigger than a 10. No. They look big. Thank you. Anyway, what's going on? The uh, usual sort of thing. Uh, I, like- as you, I had a little I had a little vacation for the first time. Holiday. Ha, as, as Madonna said. See, when that song came out, when her first song came out, I said, she'll be a one-hit wonder. She wasn't. You normally bang on with that stuff. I got that one so wrong. Do you remember? There was a point. She's, she, people probably listening to this podcast now don't remember just how big Madonna got, but there was a point where she was the biggest kind of star in the world, wasn't she? she oh was yeah, massive. And also Huge. some of her early stuff. I love Borderline. Remember Borderline? Uh, oh, that's borderline a feels like, like I'm going, going to lose, lose my mind. mind. Oh, cause you keep on pushing my, my love over the borderline. So that I think she lives in a like a border town. Mm-hmm. Like maybe in between one state and the other, like uh, th- like uh, uh, Washington D.C. Washington D.C., which is in between Canada and and the United States. No, it? no, it's between two states. Here's my hand. Ah, right. I've got California here, mm. and I've got New York at my f- my finger there. Yeah. Where is Washington D.C.? I'm going to say the very bottom here, like no, the near, near the around near here. The bunion. Yeah. No, it's so, way over here at, near my ring finger. Yeah. And it sits there, and it's not a state. It just sits. I, d- I don't know what it is. Wait, is this Washington, Washington State, State District. Washington State. Washington State is over here, just underneath my thumb. Right. Washington D.C. is about as far away as you can get. And that's. Do you know what the D.C. stands for? District of Columbia. What does that have to do with Columbia? Well, the thing is, it's not a state. Oh, it sits wow. between. Here's my guess. Pennsylvania. And no, he's wrong. Well, John said no, but I think I'm right. Pennsylvania. Detroit, and Michigan. No, that's up here, and that's the shape of a hand. Yeah. On my hand. In your hand. Wait. It's, it's what confusing. does Washington State... Washington, D.C. sits between two states. What are they? John. Johnners. I know it's Maryland and... Maryland. Which, it's Maryland! Which we call Maryland. Hey, buddy, you're from Maryland, where all the cookies get made. Yeah. Send us over a pecan pie. That's my, that's how you guys sound in our ear. That's brilliant, Tom. Yeah, thanks. Sounded like you were from Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. I don't know why. Does it, does it have something to do with Columbus? It's got something to do with they don't allow it to be a state because that's where the president is. But it's so confusing because it's called Washington State. No, then that's a word. different place. Ah, oh, buddy. <laughs> really? <laughs> Are you from Washington State or Washington, D.C.? Buddy. Oh, that's a shame. Anyway, back to Madonna. She is dating a guy. When? 
Borderline. Oh, time. That during this song, okay. And the love is so strong, right? That sometimes she has to get across to the other state just to take a breath for a second. You keep on pushing my love over, over the borderline to Washington D.C., Washington, which DC. isn't actually a state Do between Maryland oh. and Virginia. Oh, but Virginia. it wasn't supposed to be a little trivia. Supposed to be in Philadelphia, oh, but what? they had to compromise and put it between those two states because that was basically the division between the north and south oh and it's not a, it's not a state you can confirm that it's not a state they're trying to make it a state it's oh. a big push big uh, push that they're trying to do thanks johnny boy the tagline for virginia i know this because my wonderful friend carrie comes from there and i think this is lovely virginia is for lovers mm -hmm. isn't that great so if you go to virginia you're expected to maybe have a little well maybe kissy. that's where madonna was during borderline do you have a favorite Madonna song and a favorite Madonna period where you think, oh, I'd like to kiss her on the face. Uh, um, I, I like holiday. I like, oh, I like holiday. Celebrate. Yeah, that's good. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. Um, and I've, what about I've, when is she the most attractive to you? Well, I thought she was going to be a one hit wonder. Well, she's not. But like I didn't. A 25 hit wonder. Yeah, no. But I know I, I was never really a, a huge Madonna fan. I'm sorry. Oh, don't. okay. All right. She just she didn't tickle your fancy. No, she wasn't my thing. At the same time, Nina brought out 99 red balloons. Mm. And I said, she's a stare. <laughs> we'll be hearing about her. Well into the millennium. And she only had one hit, which she parlayed into two hits by doing an English version and a version Auf Deutsch <laughs> in German. Yep. Well, my favourite Madonna song. <whistles> I'm a big fan of Cherish. Cherish is love. How does that go again? Cherish, Cherish. The diddly diddly. I'm so tired of guys and stuff and people saying I'm not nice when I'm kind of nice and I'm a lovely person. Yes, I make a lot of cash, but I'm nice to my friends. Cherish me, I'm on the beach in black and white and my hair's quite short, so something else in real high harmonies. Cherish. That's perfect. Thank you. That's, that's a good version of that song. That's a perfect version. If of anybody out there could stick that to a beat, yeah. I would like to hear that in a kind of like a UK garage style. Oh, I like that too. Yeah, like a Stormzy beat. So I like Cherish the song, but in terms of when is Madonna the most attractive? Justify my love. Justify my love. Do you remember that video? Naughty. I can't remember the song. Could you? Could you stun my memory slightly? Just for you. Just. By my love. And she's all like quite Marilyn Monroe esque, right, kind of right. heavy, curly, right. blonde hair, you know, dark uh, mascara. She's wow. falling out of hotel rooms laughing. What's she laughing at? I'll tell you what <laughs> she's know. laughing at. She's laughing at what she got up to the night before. <laughs> they ordered room service and they did not give a hoot about how much it would cost. Be like, <laughs> yeah, send both of them. We'll eat both. Who cares? We'll throw it on the floor at the end Well, of it's all. probably on the record label. They're probably paying for it. Good point. You know what I mean? So she's very, No wonder she's laughing. Very attractive at that point. Anyway, I don't know why we started talking about Madonna. Hey, John. She... It's a little warm in here. Is there any chance we could go down a degree or two? Thank what do you think, Dom? Is yeah, that yeah. all right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like My that. top lip's sweating. Oh, is it? Wait a minute. I've just looked at your top lip. I've grown a moustache. I can see that. Here. When did you do that? Well, what I did was I had a little bit of a beard. Right. And I thought, okay, here we go. I'll clip it down. I thought, well, I'll leave my moustache until last. And then when I left it, I thought, actually, you've got like a little bit of a David Niven vibe going on. That's, Keep it. It's nice, that. Keep it. The moon's a balloon. Is it? That's what David Niven, one of his books is called, one of his autobiographies. Was he also an author? Or I would, he wrote about his life. I would suggest you read it. Really? Here's here's the here's the David Niven story that stayed with me from that book. Go on. He just comes to Hollywood, trying to be a star. Of course he does. He's a beautiful man. Yeah. He's got a lovely voice. He's a very good actor. So he's been with the same agent for years and years and years. Gets to Hollywood, goes to a party. One of the big agents is there from one of the big companies. Let's call it. C A A. Yeah. Right? And the big Artie Guffman. Artie Guffman. Hey, I'm Artie. And he gets he gets introduced to Artie Guffman. What what's happening, fella? We your mustache and you look like James Bond. We'll make you a big star. I'm David Niven. Well, what the fuck? You're talking like that. You sound like an idiot. You gotta talk like me. American. <laughs> Come on, let's go. 
I want to be a star. You are a star, buddy. Name and lights. Should I come and see you on Monday? You want me to rep you? I'll take 25%. Hey, I'll make it 10 for you, buddy. So then, David Nevin gets this offer from the big agent on a Friday night at the party. He calls up his other agent on the Saturday. I'm the sorry. The English guy. The English guy. I'm going to have to leave you. Oh, darling, why? We've been together for 15 years. Because I've just met someone who says he's going to make me a star. Oh, that's quite irregular. But I have to go. Okay. And it went like that. Sunday, he's all excited. Of course he is. So he just, you know, he shaves it. Not the moustache, of course. No, no. Hair, gets his hair done. Mm. Buys a new suit. Mm. Monday morning, first thing, gets to see A.A. Goes in to see the agent. What are we calling him again? Artie Guffman. I've got an, uh, I've got an appointment with Artie Guffman. The oh, <laughs> the, the I, don't, I don't know how that... Well, come, come on in. Right, you can be the secretary, right? Oh, that, that, the secretary says... I'll give you the line, okay? Yeah, go on. Give me a line, really. I'm sorry. He died yesterday in a car <gasps> accident. Oh. Please give me the line, Dom. Well, I'm terribly sorry. He died yesterday in a car accident. He exploded. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm going to be a star. No, no. He's dead. But you that can find means... him on the freeway near the five. <laughs> He's in a couple of bags. <laughs> but, oh, that's but terrible. I'm, but I'm going to be a star. Oh, and I've just sacked my... Agent. I just fired him. <laughs> oh, God. You know he called his English agent very far. I've reconsidered. <laughs> you well, are marvellous. And that story wow. is directly from the moons of Balloon. Wow. When David Nevin had a moustache... Just like yours, Dom. Well, now, look, I'm not, I'm not angling, I'm not fishing here for anything, but I have recently given you, I think, three books. Three books! I gave you Jaws. Jaws! The Story of a Shark. Oh, I don't want to read it. No, don't. Especially if you're in the water a lot. The Story of a Shark, I gave you Mr. Strangelove, which is a biography about Peter Sellers, one of your favourite actors of all time. Uh, uh, yeah. And then was it Doom Patrol? I gave you yes, uh, that's yeah, true, yeah. novel, Doom Patrol. Fantastic. <laughs> I'll tell you the one I'm going to read first. Yours. It is a really fun book. But yeah, I mean, I know that you have a slightly irrational fear that you might get eaten by a shark. And Jaws won't help that, but it is a it is a brilliant read. Has your wife started reading the biography on Robbie Williams? That no, she's reading another book just now about a woman who hits her head and then wakens up five years later um, uh, with no memory. Wow. Well, no just... memory of the five years. Right. Thinks it's just happened. <laughs> Boom. Bang! Wow. Okay, good. Well, I look forward to hearing about it. But I look forward to, to reading Jaws. I enjoyed the movie. It was very good, but it has given me an irrational fear of a shark. The great, great film from a master filmmaker. And everyone talks about that kind of crash, zoom, dolly thing that goes on in Jaws, which is great. But for me, and this has become a conversation that, you know, is a little bit passe with Jaws, they couldn't, they didn't have a Jaws fish that Spielberg thought was good enough on camera. He thought that the movie would get ruined if you saw the fish very often. And because of the limitation of hoping for a great fish and it wasn't there, he was like, right, we're going to have to work around it. We'll just feature a fin and an eye and stuff like that. And that is what makes it scary, isn't it? It's the yeah. inclination of the fish. The great filmmakers, how they have to change while they're making the movie and they accidentally make a better movie than they were going to make. Right. Because they're brilliant. Oh, emails and real mails. Fast as tigers, slow as snails. Dom, voicemails. Let's do it, buddy. Hi, Billy and Dom. Hi. I love the podcast. Aww. My name's Maddie, and I'm from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I noticed you guys tried your hand in a Minnesotan accent in the last episode, but it sounded a bit more New York, so I thought I'd help you out with some phrases that'll make go. you sound like a true Minnesotan. Minnesota. So instead of saying bag, you should say bag. Instead of saying excuse me, you should really say, oh, let me squeeze right past you. Oh, let me squeeze and right past you. And instead of saying yes or no, you can say, oh, no, yeah, or oh, yeah, no. Oh, yeah. And these yeah. phrases will help you seem right at oh, home yeah, in no. Minnesota. Oh, no, Thanks yeah. so much. I hope to see you guys practicing and have a great rest of your day. Let me squeeze right past you. Let me squeeze right past you. Thanks, oh, yeah. Maddie. No. And they, oh, yeah, no. And they say, they don't say Minnesota, they say Minnesota. 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 Thanks, Maddie. Thank you for the tips. 
and uh, helping us out with my our American accents. Uh, I think our American accents, to be fair, are pretty fantastic. Yeah, we pretty much nailed it, that dumb. Anyway. Let me squeeze right past you. Let me squeeze right past you, buddy. <laughs> Move your keister. Ah, uh, yeah, no. Now, we all know we need to drink more water, but how are we going to do that? I'll tell you one thing that helps. Liquid IV. One little packet of liquid IV poured into 16 ounces of water will hydrate you faster and more efficiently than just water alone. It's a great thing to do first thing in the morning when your body is craving some hydration or maybe before a workout or during a workout. That's what I do because I love the flavours. Lemon, lovely. Watermelon. They have all sorts though. Apple pie, strawberry, guava, acai berry. And another great thing, it contains five essential vitamins. It's got more vitamin C than an orange, more potassium than a banana, and it's healthier than all those sugary sports drinks, no artificial flavours or preservatives, and less sugar than an apple. So grab your liquid IV and bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code ONION at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code ONION at liquidiv.com. Well, it's almost time for those long fall evenings, or autumn as we would call it. It's time to get round the backyard with your friends, maybe have a few drinks, a barbecue, and what do you need when the evenings get cooler? A fire pit from Solo Stove. They are really fantastic. They come in different sizes. You can move them around. They're not stuck in one place. A really fantastic fire pit. Smokeless from Solo Stove. I've got one and I love it. I use it every week. Made with premium grade 304 stainless steel and a patented 360 degree airflow system that maximizes efficiency while minimizing smoke. Get the perfect fire pit for those fall nights and make your backyard a destination with a spectacular fire pit from Solo Stove. Shop the fall event now and get an extra $10 off when you use promo code ONION at checkout. They're so confident you'll love it, they offer a lifetime warranty and a 30-day free return policy. Just go to solostove.com and remember, you get $10 off when you use promo code ONION. Hey, Dom and Billy. Oh. This is Luke from Kansas City. I had two questions for you guys. If you had to choose tea or coffee, which one would you prefer? And also, if you had to choose your hand to be made out of butter, or for your tears to be liquid butter, which one would you rather? I love your guys' show. You guys have so much fun, and I have so much fun listening to you guys. Thank you. He's from Kansas City. Oh, Kansas City! Now, why did he say Kansas City? Is there city. another Kansas that's not a city? I don't know. I mean, there's, there's, well, there's a, we open up a little bit of can of worms here, aren't we? Because Are we? there's Arkansas, which looks like Arkansas, which we, like lots of people growing up in Britain, call Arkansas, but it's not, it's Arkansas. Then there's Kansas, but we're not in Kansas anymore, are we? <laughs> but we never were. We're in Kansas City. No, he's, where, where well, he's is he? He's from Kansas City. Now, is that different from what? Well, hold on. John. Is Kansas City different from, if I said I'm from Kansas? Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. Okay. Uh, Cass just did a uh, podcast, Opportunist, on, uh, uh, it takes place in Kansas City. And Kansas I learned City. that Kansas City is split as a city in two states. It's one and a half is in Kansas, and the other half is in Missouri. So mm. Kansas City is in Missouri, half of it? Why I don't know if it's a half, but it's split between those two states. One in Kansas, river? one Missouri. Is there a river? I'll look. I'll see if there's a river. A river runs through it. Normally, a river runs through a major city. Anyway, the questions. Yeah. Well, I know what, how you're going to answer. Tea or coffee? Well, at the moment, Tom, I would have to go coffee. You're addicted. 
I love coffee. You love it. I absolutely, but I love tea and all. I like tea. But I drink tea, what we call builder's tea, don't we? Yeah. I have a PG Tips or a Thai Foo with some milk in it. And I, and I enjoy that, don't you? Yeah, and maybe a biscuit. Yeah, I'm not really doing it as a health... I'm not having a ginger and ginseng and, you know, green tea and all that kind of stuff. I'm just having a nice cup of tea. Yeah. No, I hear you. Um, I like a cup of tea thick, too. The thing with me, I started drinking coffee during this whole COVID lockdown thing. And unfortunately, for me to chase the feeling, mm-hmm. I had to start drinking more and more Coffee, my body very quickly built up a resistance oh, yeah. to the magic. Mm-hmm. So I started one cup of coffee. Lovely, lovely little yep, buzz. Nice. Eventually it became like four or five cups of coffee. I just thought, I don't want to do that. So I'm not drinking coffee anymore. I do drink the builder's tea thing that you talked about, PG Tips, Yorkshire. But I do like the kind of medicinal tea. So of an evening, maybe a chamomile tea, just to calm it right down. Now, what did T.S. Eliot say about... I? I'd count my life through coffee spoons. Oh, I don't know. I don't. Oh, he says something, and I think I do that. I think every day is full of coffee, and I, you know, I have my morning coffee, and then in the afternoon I think, well, I'll have a little coffee, a little pick me up, and what kind will I have? Mm. Will I have a double espresso <sighs> with a touch of sugar, or will I just have a nice black coffee? Mm. Or, yeah, I, I love do it. like the. Ri- you had told me during during COVID that you had said. You know, you'll get into the ritual and you'll enjoy the ritual. I love the ritual mm. of grinding up the coffee beans and mm. then putting it in the little Italian thing and the noise. Oh, jeez. Doesn't love, make that noise. You no, know, I love all that. Yeah. But I just, I started chasing the dragon and I don't uh. want to, I don't want to chase it. Isn't T.S. Eliot attributed with, in some way, writing cats because didn't he write a bunch of poems about cats he did came cats and and you became obsessed with the movie cats yeah, obsessed. and uh, you might remember i sent you the book of poetry Got from t.s Eliot, cats yeah i don't know why he did it i suppose for some kids and his family or something I think he kept cats and he started to be charmed by their idiosyncratic ways Mm -hmm. so he wrote some poems about them which then very bizarrely i think andrew lloyd webber was looking around for a musical and he thought t.s Eliot's books of poems about cats i'll turn that into almost any musical you can look at and go that sounds like a terrible idea but it always works not always but a lot of the time i mean the film cats didn't work so badly that it became like a curiosity and I absolutely was obsessed and continue to be obsessed with it there is that one amazing song in Cats Memories brilliant go on Dom Memory no Midnight all alone in the moonlight I started well keep going saw a cat having a shite that may be wrong near a lamppost that's broke how did it break I remember Good memory. Copper threw a stone at the lamp. Oh, that's what happened. Something shattered. The glass. Like my dreams. Oh, very now, poetic. You're a music man. Mm-hmm. What's that thing that I'm doing there that I'm not doing on purpose? Midnight. What's that? Vibrato. Now, why do people do that to sustain a note? Well, it's just it's it's harder to hold a note. Bang on. Ma. You stick a bit of a brat on it. Ma. It's a bit easier to hold the note, isn't it? Okay. And a lot of people say that's where you get that sort of Broadway sound. Is there a lot of a brat? A lot of a brat. I do like it. Yeah. It's it's a lovely thing. The person who does the most amazing vibrato, if I'm thinking about it, is that song from Romeo and Juliet. You know where they meet for the first time. Near the fish tank, and that lady sings that that song. Kiss me, t- yeah. Kissing me, kissing you, kiss Desiree? me. Desiree, is that that? Kiss oh, me sh- under the sun. No, 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 no. What is it? No. What is it? It's um. Kiss me. No, you sure? <laughs> you've ruined it now. No. We were having a romantic moment, and you've you sure ruined it. That? No, it's um. Oh, no, I can't get... Oh, it's a... A love can stay 
thousand trials, the strong will never fall. But watching stars without you, my heart roll. And Leo and Kate Dane. I've never heard that. Yeah, yeah. uh, Cause I'm kissing you. Something like that. And he's confused because he sees this beautiful girl, but then he goes, oh, fish. Yeah, she's a, he's a, oh, they're like guppy there. Yeah, well, she's now, oh, hang on, see an enemy, Wait, see an enemy. <laughs> oh, 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 there she is again. Oh, oh, oh hang oh, on, oh, oh, hang oh, on, there's, oh, a, there's a salmon. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> What's the salmon oh, doing in there? What is the salmon doing in there? Jeez. It's massive. Oh, yeah, so, vibrato, thanks for that, Bills. Not at all. Second half of that question that guy sent in. Would you rather have a buttery hand? A buttery hand. Or tears that of butter. melted butter i'd rather i'd rather cry tears because I, think so. I wouldn't like if you used your buttery hand like say i did a whole loaf of toast would then I, would then i have no hand yeah you damage your hand permanently or is it continually seeping butter well that that would be good if it kind of re what? re Re, uh, re, re happened. Re, rewired it. But as somewhere. as long as I was under, like, uh, as under my power. Yeah. I'd hate to say, "Hello, Mr. President." Yeah. Butter done, and then for the rest of your life, just a buttery stump. And he's like, ah, "You're never welcome in Washington." <laughs> well, I went Irish then. <laughs> <laughs> Washington D.C. again. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to cry, buttery tears, because then. When you've made your toast, mm-hmm. you could put on that moment in Romeo and Juliet. Like, I'm kissing you. <laughs> I think we're slightly off. Are here. we? And then you could cry into your toast, and all you'd need then is a little bit of marmite. Done. Free but wh- would you always be sad when you eat toast then? Mm, a good Sometimes point. a good cry is good, though. It makes you feel better. I like a good cry. If I want a good cry, my mm. go to film for that is E.T. Well, is it really? Oh, yeah, it'll get me every time. More than, more than um, uh, fried green tomatoes. Never seen fried green tomatoes. You should watch it. It's At very the good. Whistle Stop Cafe. It's very good. Was well, that your go-to cry film? Uh, I've never cried, Dom. You don't cry, do you? I'm a hard, hard man. Is there a, is there a sad film that you that you think is your favourite sad film? Mm, let me Since think. You're a tough Scottish man who um, never shows emotion. I can't think. I'll have a think about that. Does then. Gregory's Girl not make you a little emotional? No, it makes me laugh. It's brilliant. Yeah. So, should we go into this uh, question? Do you want to read out this question here, Bills, or do you want me to? I'll do it. It's from, from Melissa, Melissa Beer. By Stanford, Connecticut. Melissa B. There's a C in there. That Should that C be there? Connect. Connect. I cut. Connect. That's how you can connect connect break it down. I cut. Right, let's Dominic, have a look. on my hand, where would you find connected? Uh, you exactly where your wedding ring is, right there. I have no idea, Dom. Oh, uh, okay, thanks. I wanted to thank you so much for the Friendship Onion podcast. It's really helped me laugh, and I needed that, especially this week. The other day, oh, I had to put our nineteen-year-old cat down. Oh wow, he lived a life. Nineteen. It was honestly one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Flynn was a sweet friend to the whole family and the house feels really empty without him. Have you ever lost a pet and how did you feel comforted after the passing? Dom, I know you have many exotic animals. How do you handle their deaths? Not trying to bring the podcast down, but I think talking about these wonderful animals, creatures that we share so much of our lives with helps in the healing process. Mm. Ah. Well, sorry to hear that, Melissa. It's always sad when you you lose a... A pet, especially 19 years, but yeah. sounds like he, he was a wonderful friend to the family. That's a real shame. I've got um, my friend BJ, Billy Johnson, who, you know, he just lost his dog and he gets super um, close to his dogs, you know, as, as we all do. It's awful. And you just wish that these dogs and cats that we share our lives <coughs> with would just live the same Length. It's, it's a such cruel a trick. Shame. It is a cruel trick, isn't it? That one of the closest relationships that yeah. you can have with another animal, they tend to live fifteen years maximum. Most of them. Aren't they? It's a real shame. I was listening to the Divine Comedy the other day, and I was listening to one of their songs, and I never noticed it before. But one of the lyrics was, you know, at the end of your life, the only thing you'll regret is all the dogs and cats that you've that you've, you know didn't get to spend all your life with but you get to see them when yeah. you die 
I subscribe to the idea that in a lot of ways, something only, <clears throat> excuse me, something only dies when you forget about it. Yes. So as long as you keep in that memory alive and you talk about them in a glowing way and they stay in your mind and in your thoughts, even though physically they're not there, you can still think yeah. about them. And you they're know. such a wonderful part of our lives, aren't they, pets? Uh, it's really sad. I'm sorry to hear that, Melissa. Sorry to hear that, Melissa. Yeah. Um, Lots of love to you. Yeah, I hope you start to feel better. And thanks a lot for your question. Sorry if there's anyone out there that's also lost a pet recently. Miro. Miro is a collaborative whiteboarding online platform. It's created to help you visualize and, and discuss and share all your work. It's just like the whiteboard you'd have in your office where everyone can draw on it and write things and put up sticky notes, except it's online. And all your colleagues or friends can all meet up there and work or play or whatever it is in between. You can write on it, you can draw on it, put up videos, sticky notes, diagrams, audio, whatever you need to help conceptualize your idea. It's a fantastic product and it's really fun to use. It's great just now as well when people are finding it difficult to collaborate outside the normal office. It works a treat. Miro is creating a revolution in how we create and collaborate. So join over 20 million users today. You can sign up and use Miro today for free. Go to Miro, that's M-I-R-O dot com slash onion to start your free account. Sign up today and take advantage of three free whiteboards with this exclusive offer. Go to Miro, M-I-R-O dot com slash onion and start using Miro today. There's no reason to delay. Are you finding it hard to think of what to make for dinner every night? Lunches? Well, I tell you who can help. Green Chef. Green Chef takes care of meal planning, grocery shopping, and even some of the food prep, which leaves you more time to do what you want to do. But on top of that, the recipes are really interesting. That's what I like. So I end up eating things that I wouldn't normally eat. Maybe some vegetables that I don't normally buy. And I find it in there and I use their recipes and it's delicious. As well as that, Green Chef is the most sustainable meal kit. So you can feel great about what you're eating and how it got to your table. It's actually the only meal kit that's both plastic and carbon offset. They are the number one meal kit for eating well. So go to greenchef.com slash onion100 and use the code onion100 to get $100 off, including free shipping. That's $100 off and free shipping. Just go to greenchef.com slash onion100 and use code onion100. Here's another question from Crow. Wow! In Latvia. Latvia! Wow, yeah. If my head was the world, <sighs> where would my... Well, it depends where, where, how it's spinning. Well, my eye, my left eye, is um, the United Kingdom, and my ear is the very east coast of Russia. Where do you find Latvia? I'm going to say somewhere close to the back of your hairline ish. Up here? No, like here. Oh, here? Way down there? Yeah, not bad, not bad. It's a guess. Yeah, it's a bad one. Anyway, Crow says, I'm a really big fan of Lord of the Rings. I spent a lot of time watching the scenes clips from the movies too. Because of this, I want to be an actress myself. I have a few questions and here they are. What goes through your mind while filming a scene in a movie or a TV show? And then when you watch a movie, do you wonder what the actor is thinking? Okay. Well... What goes through my mind when I'm filming a scene is usually what's going on in the scene. You know, I try as hard as I can to like stay in the moment. So let's say the character that I play has not seen his family for years and he's seen them again. That's what I'm thinking while mm -hmm. I'm in the scene. This is, these are people who I miss. These are people who I love. This is an amazing moment for me to be here. 
And then when you watch a movie, do you wonder what the actor's thinking? Not often. I usually just think, if they're a good actor, I believe yeah. that they are in the scene, having the moment. In fact, if I ever struggle with an actor's performance, it's when I'm probably seeing the workings, the cogs yeah. go in a little bit. I agree. It's my, my favourite style of acting is, is when you don't see any of that, when they're not telling you. So, yeah, when I'm filming, and, and the ideal is uh, when you're just living in the scene and reacting. And another level to that in, in film acting, when there is um, different takes and things, I, I enjoy the technicality as well of um, continuity and, and giving editors a good cut place. Mm. I, like, I like doing things where I know, like, Maybe I always <clears throat> cough at the same time, so they've got a nice cut there. Mm. I, I, and once I get into it, I, sh I quite like the sort of teamwork of thinking, oh, in the edit, this would be fun if I yeah. did. I pick that up, and when I put it down on that line, I know they've got a good cut to something mm. else. I enjoy that as well. Collaboration. Mm. The collaboration of the whole thing. Um, all right, well, thank you, Crow. What a fantastic name. And then here is DC in Fountain Hills, Arizona. I've been to Arizona. Fantastic place. Very hot. Very hot. It's a desert, Dom. It is a desert. The year Return of the King cleaned up at the Academy Awards is my favourite Oscar telecast. Honourable mentions go to the year Joel and Ethan Cohen won Best Director for No Country of Old, for Old Men. Fantastic mm -hmm. film. I'm curious, if you guys are up on your Oscar history, what are your favourite Academy Award wins? And just in case y'all have no idea what to say to that one, do you have any anecdotes about being at the Oscar ceremonies? I think um, you, you're probably more up on the Oscars and the history I'm a fan than of the I Oscars. Am. Yeah, you love it. I've, wa I've, I've watched it like religiously even when I was uh, a youngster, probably from the age of 13 or 14, I would stay up late and watch it. Loved it. Um, Favourite years. Daniel Day-Lewis winning for My Left Foot was an amazing moment because he was kind of, he just kind of arrived, it seemed, out of nowhere, though he had done films before and, you know, became this massive star. Anthony Hopkins winning for Silence of the Lambs was amazing. Right. And I also really like um, Halle Berry's uh, kind of reaction to her winning an Oscar, which is one of complete kind of overwhelmed joy. I love seeing things like that. I love that. Yeah. My, my uh, I don't have much uh, memories of watching it, even though I watch it every year. But when I was at the Oscars that year for Return of the King, my favorite memory is I went out for a pee. And you're allowed to go out for a pee when uh, the adverts are on. Uh, so you get the length of an advert to go for a pee. And they have people dressed up in evening attire, right? So if you go for a pee, they seat. sit in your seat. Seat fillers. So that it never looks like there's an empty seat. And I took too long having a pee, mm. and they closed the doors. <gasps> so for one whole section, I missed it, and I was outside, just standing in line with everyone else who'd missed the pee break. Mm. And I can't actually remember who was there, but I remember standing there and thinking, this is the weirdest, most surreal, because there's people like, you know, Salma Hayek in her dress and, you know, Prince. And, and I'm standing in line to get back into this building with these people. Right. I just thought this is, you know, because it just shows everybody's human and needs a pee. Yeah. But here we are all waiting to get back in. And the guy who they brought in to replace you to sit down, yeah. he and I are best mates. That's Dave. Oh, yeah. Dave. We, we actually own a couple of businesses together and he's a lovely lad. I was best man at his wedding. He's a great, so thank you for going for a pee and uh, taking too much time washing your hands. That could have been me. He's great. He's really close with Elijah. He's great friends with Sean. I'll Good be. lad, Dave. Hey, Dave, if you're listening. Anyway, I think that's it for the questions. I think that's Bills. plenty, Tom. We've got a couple of reviews here. Have we? Should we read? Go should on, we read on, one or two? Go on, go on, go on. From Eggnog Pirate, you do that one. Eggnog Pirate, what a fantastic name. He says, I'm only two episodes in. But it doesn't feel like a podcast. It feels like two mates talking about their memories, both in relation to the Lord of the Rings and life in general. Splendid job, gents. 
He said gob, gent. No, I think that's probably John. Yeah, it says gob. It does say splendid gob, but I'm going to say that John probably meant job. Yeah, jobby. I mean, we don't tend to think too much about the podcast because we've always wanted it to be kind of loosey-goosey. That was intentional. But one of the things that we set out to do is let's have it feel casual and fun. And we're just having a lovely chat. And let's have the listeners involved so you guys have questions. We're going to have another quiz, I think, pretty soon. More guests. So, you know, if you have any ideas, if you have questions for us, you want to be in the quiz, you have, uh, what's that thing called again, where they say something and you try and work out what it is? Riddle. A riddle. A riddle. You forgot the word riddle. <laughs> wow. That's that's crazy. Yeah. I, for, I forgot the name for pyramid once. Oh, really? Does that happen? Well, that's, that's we, riddle's depends. worse, actually, isn't it? We, anyway. We like the interaction, it. don't we? We like we like the kind of interaction. Yeah. You guys are creating the show with us type thing. And we didn't know today that we were going to talk about cats or vibrato. It just happened, didn't it? Yeah, it does. Because of what you guys say. So send in your emails to uh, the Friendship Onion at castmedia.com. Cast with a K or speak pipe forward slash dot com I've ruined it no I was good was speakpipe.com forward slash the friendship on you yeah I put a forward slash in there a little and if you do it. review the show which you should do you've got to like review subscribe and then you have to take a screenshot of the review and tag us at the friendship onion and then we'll feature you on the show Billy and Dom eat the world lovely stuff uh I think we're going to do Billy and Dom Eats the World right now. And just so you know, Bills, for the first time ever, this is a surprise because John brought something in that was recommended by a listener. And he said, do you want to know? And we said, no, don't tell us. Don't so tell we, us. we don't know. We have no idea what Here we're eating. Here comes John. We're going to eat his hand, it seems. Oh, no. Oh. oh. What, it's, it's a fruit. Sort it's a, of is fruit. that dragon fruit? Dragon fruit. Ooh. Look at that. The juice that comes from it makes you think of beetroot. It is a little beetrooty. Wow. So look, I'm going to put mine down for a second because I feel like that's very stainy coloured. Now, a dragon, dragon fruit. fruit. Let me read some of this stuff to you. This was, this was recommended to us from Harris in Eugene, Oregon. And dragon fruit, it says here, is a fruit of many names known as pataya or pataya, pataya, depending on the genus, as well as strawberry pear and even night-blooming cereus. But in Thailand, it is called Tang Loi. Pitahaya is hailing from Israel. Good luck with this one. And in Hawaii, it has another name. Off you go. <laughs> Paninokapauahau. Very, very good there. Remember, we tried to learn a little bit of Thai because one of the scale doubles on <laughs> Lord of Rings Fun. was a lovely, lovely lady, girl, called Fawn, who, mm. who doubled for Pippin most of the time, I would think. Fawn's, do you remember her actual full name? Prapafon. <clears throat> Chan Santo Prapahon. Prapahon, that's, and she was so sweet. Lovely fun. And she was such a lovely person. And we'd go to her apartment and have little parties and stuff. And she tried to teach us some Thai. So we could say good morning and thank you. Yeah. And I asked her to tell me how to say, yeah, you look lovely. Yeah. You know, and she told us and she said, but my pronunciation made it sound like I was saying, I want to fight you. Oh, yeah, you don't want So that. you don't want those things to sound like each other. Yeah, and she used to say to us quite a lot, do ba, do ba. And that, that means you're crazy. You're, you're crazy. You're crazy. And she taught us, obviously, like, ma, which is like, good morning. And, and then, that's, it's, the, the, it's tones in Thai that we don't have, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and they have a lot of feminine and masculine. So, mm. like, we, you and I, for thank you, would say, kop kum kap. But if it's a woman, kop would, kum ka. Kop kum ka. And then do you remember what very tasty was? Because I, no. I memorized that because you say it all the time in Thailand because they take their food very seriously. Very tasty was aroi ma. Aroima. Aroima. And they love it. If you say their food is tasty, they love it. Anyway, let's continue. This is it, called Tang Loi in Thailand. Yeah, and it uh, also says here in the United States, dragon fruit get, continues to gain popularity, which is spurring expansion in commercial 
production. A number of dragon fruit species are grown around the world from Asia, Middle East, Central and South America. Vietnam is Asia's top producer, primarily growing fruit with bright pink skin and white flesh. That's the stuff that I've had before, but this uh-huh. is red flesh. Other Asian countries cultivating the fruit include Malaysia. I've been there. The Philippines. I've been there. Sri Lanka. I've been there. Thailand, Taiwan. I've not been there. Thailand. We've been there. We went to Thailand. Of course we did. Now, Dom. I mean, John. John Ernst. Where is this one from, do you know? Ralph's. Ralph's. It's from Ralph's. From <laughs> Ralph. Lovely Ralph. Thank you, Ralph. It's got a red, 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 red wine. Ready, Dom? Well, yes. I'm having a huge chunk. I, have I hope to I say, like it. The smell is not. Hold on. It doesn't smell particularly inviting. No. Oh. It smells of earth. It says here, f- dragon fruit is, is often consumed flesh, much like a kiwi, and the plant's small flower is edible when cooked. Rich in protein, fiber, and iron, antioxidants is a popular fruit in fruit bars, jellies, fruits, yogurts, smoothies. Red varieties can also be used as a natural dye or colorant. Should we give it a go? I wonder what's the difference between a dye or a colorant. Yeah, let's find that out. If anyone knows the difference, I'm going to give it a little Ready? Taste. Yeah. I'm having the whole thing. Me too. Are you doing it? Let's do it. There's a little pomegranate taste to that. Are you uh, getting that? Yeah, I'm getting that, actually. I love fruit. I've not met a fruit that I don't like yet. Even durian, which is quite a controversial fruit in Southeast Asia. I love it. While dragon fruit is a cousin of the prickle of the cactus pear, which grows in my garden, the two fruits exhibit key differences. First, pataya seeds, which we're eating now, are edible, much like the kiwi fruit. Second, the fruit does not typically have spines. Instead, possesses various coloured protective shoots that surround the baseball-sized fruit. Baseball size? It's more softball size than baseball. It's huge. It's massive. Unless we've still got tiny, tiny little hobbit hands. Um, name a fruit where the seeds are on the outside. Strawberry. Perfect, Tom. I've absolutely nailed it. You got that one. Um, how do you define a fruit? It grows on a tree. No. Because pineapple's a fruit, isn't it? Does that not grow on a tree? It grows in the ground, pineapple. Well, it's a vegetable then. <laughs> no, it's not. Are you sure? Yeah. Right, go on then. Fruit. Seeds. There's got, seeds in it. It's got seeds. So a tomato. Not a It's a fruit. Would you say tomato or tomato? I'd say tomato, but do Scottish people say tomato? No, we say tomato as well. Oh, gosh. Do you have a favourite way of eating a tomato? Because some versions of tomatoes I don't like. I don't like the snotty, gooey stuff mm-hmm. inside a tomato, but in a Greek salad. Love it. Mm. What about you? I like it just, yeah, just with some salt on it. Oh, really? That's quite mm. kind of British, that, isn't it? Just like you, you slice tomatoes and then you sprinkle some salt on and eat it. I was helping a friend get ready for dinner once, and I think you were there, and there was tomatoes, and I was putting salt on and a, a woman came in, an elderly woman, came in and said, how do you know that they want salt on their tomatoes? I said, I don't even know if they want tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, it's tasty. What do you think of it, Dom? Oh, it's fantastic. Um, it's not as intense as I would have hoped. Little pomegranate taste. I think you were onto something with the beetroot taste. Is there a slight beetrooty vibe? Yeah, almost a vegetable. Yeah. There's a vi- there's an earthy. Earthy. Mm-hmm. Lovely. You've nailed it there. It's a semi-spiny plant, and mm. it can have long, fleshy, triangular stem segments that should be pruned regularly. Commercial orchards need their trellising system to support the plant's vertical growth and aerial roots. Trellis. Something Trellis. To, something to grow up. It's amazing how plants do that. I had a house once, and the roots grew in the gaps between the the bricks, and then it went into the you know into the house. How does it do that? Plants are amazing. I mean, nature is amazing, and the word awesome is thrown around willy nilly. So it is by done. people. But if you really want to see something extremely awesome, nature. 
the life of animals and plants and mosses and trees and stuff. Incredible. Mm -hmm. And planets. I think planets are awesome. Planets, and galaxies. Sour, sour, sour sweets. Sour sweets. Sour sweets are so yeah, nippy on awesome. your tongue. Mm. As a night bloomer, the plant has a yellowish green fragrant flower that opens early in the evening and will wilt by daylight due to light and temperature. I'm going to guess that that is a a fruit that is pollinated by bats then since the plant opens at night i have some cactus that only flowers at night and i have a bunch of bats that come and drink its nectar and pollinate it no i would like to know about this plant go on, go on. and you might not have it here dom so, so you keep scanning and keep I'll reading keep scrolling i'd like to know if you were the type of person who would eat you know to be healthy and maybe to fix an ailment what would you eat this dragon fruit for yeah, that's a good point. What What is it good for? I mean, outside of just the tastiness of it, and you can imagine it being really refreshing in mm. a country, you know, mm -hmm. kind of hydration, high vibrational water. But um, also I would say the seeds, which you can't kind of eat all of the seeds before you swallow them. Uh, swallow them. I'm wondering if the seeds are good for your gut because they drag some of the detritus through some of the old stuff some of the stuff that sits in well dom i finished mine wait did you eat that big did you get a big bit with it as well yeah how did you eat that what big bit i got that no you got the big bit oh okay but uh so i i, I must have liked it but it's not as I feel as if I might have got another one of these, and I'll, I'll try it again. It's maybe the first time I've tried that. Yeah, dragon fruit. And I would try it again, Maybe but I feel decade. as if there's oh. probably a more intense one. Mm. Do you mean sour? I don't know. Just a more like I get that earthy taste, mm. and I get the pomegranate thing you're talking mm -hmm. about. But I feel as if there sh it should be more intense. Okay. I mean, do you have a favourite fruit? I love a melon. Of course you do. You're only human. I love melon. Is it anywhere near the chart of a melon for you, or are you putting it in the kind of average fruit? That's what I'm thinking. You know if I got a melon that was just a little too old or something, and it had lost that strong melon, I feel as if there might be a stronger dragon fruit taste that I'm lacking here. And I'm not blaming John for this. Or don't blame John. Or Ralph's. Or the dragon fruit. Or the dragon. I'm not putting the blame on anyone. No, no. I'm just saying there might be a more intense experience for me out there somewhere. Never play the blame game. Never. But what I would say is a strength and a weakness of fruit. Mm -hmm. Your greatest strength is your greatest weakness is there is a lack of consistency with fruit. Mm -hmm. So you might get an apple from a tree and you eat it and you think that is the greatest apple that I've had you take another apple from the same tree right next to it and you think absolute horse is piss because there's no consistency with fruit so it's a bit of a gamble that might have been a slightly average dragon fruit yeah but still quite tasty very tasty and see when you were doing the whole apple tree thing there mm. I could see you as Adam in, in a, a, a sort of a remake of the biblical story mm -hmm. from the Old Testament mm. I saw you as Adam mm. and Madonna as Eve. Cherish, cherish. I would, di what, I would direct it. Yeah. She'd need a heck of a large snake to cover up some of her bits. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And it's, all, uh, it's only an apple. Do you know what I mean? They, they've got everything. Yeah. God's don't like, touch that apple. You, no, I'm fine. You've got everything. You live in paradise. You don't want for anything. There's nothing here that you need to worry about. Just don't. Don't. Can I have the banana? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Tangerine? Yeah. No problem. Dragon fruit? Yeah, sure. Don't eat the apple. No, no, we won't eat the apple. You had it. No, I didn't have it. Eve had it. Oh, was it? I thought it was... I just saw you picking it. Oh, was it? You says, I'll, I'll have that apple. I'm not fully versed on all of the stories in, in the Bible. We should Basically, back to that. one of them. But you would be wonderful is what I'm saying. Fact, they were both told... Have whatever you want, but don't have that fruit. And yeah. one of them tried the fruit. Yeah. And then everything uh, was uh, all in trouble from that point. Should we give it some scores? Go on, Tom. First of all, flavour. Flavour. Well, as I say, I enjoyed the flavour. I like the pomegranate thing you were talking about. I like the earthiness. I, like the I don't think, I think there's a better dragon fruit out there. Of course there is. Oh, dragon fruit. 8.2. 
I'm going to give it for flavor. I agree with you. I think there's probably a slightly kind of more fried in the sun concentrated flavor. I'm going to give it an eight. Not bad. Aesthetics. Could you hold up your big thing? I beg your pardon. Could you? Uh, Look how beautiful that is. I mean, you can't even imagine that nature could create something that color. Here is. And let me see the inside of it. Here's the front. Right. And here is the inside. Look or, at as that. Some people might call the interior. I mean, it's uh, beautiful. It's red, deep, deep, uh, deep it's, red. Yeah, scarlet is that? What the hell is scarlet? It's like a ox blood. Yeah, ox blood red. Stunning sky at night. I, would, ah. I mean, in terms of appearance, I'm giving that a nine point seven. Of course you are, Dom, and I'm giving it a nine point eight. Oh, you're always trumping me. And then in terms of usefulness, I don't know because I've, I've not had it in a bunch of different ways. That might be the only way that I've had it. Although I'm guessing I did have it in a fruit salad once in Southeast Asia. But the flesh was white and the seeds were black, much like a licorice all sort. So is the black and white one cheaper than the colour? Like a TV <laughs> like licence? <a> <laughs> Possibly. We can find out if we have any Southeast Asian friends out there that know the answer to that question. Uh, quite possibly, but it was very tasty. I'm sure you put it in a smoothie. Oh. I'm sure there's dragon fruit ice cream. I'm sure it's, oh. yeah, I'm, there's a ton of stuff. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, this is... Dragon uh, fruit sweeties. What's the thing you have? Oh, yeah. It's the root, maybe the root of an orchid, maybe, and you have it, and it's a something fruit, but it's not dragon fruit. But we, remember, we used to go to a vegan place down on Main Street, and I would always get it in a curry. Lotus root. Is that? Does it have little... Yeah. Can't have it. Lotus root. I'm getting confused with that and dragon fruit. Yeah, it's different. Totally different. Well, dragon fruit, lotus, lotus root. root. It's just a rhyming thing. Yeah. So if I were to say to you, trumpet toot, would you get confused with that as well? It, it, yeah. yeah. Your, your favourite suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tomato <laughs> soup. <laughs> Your mind, you get. We're all getting old, Billy. That's what's going on. But it's delicious, Dom. And how useful is it? I mean, I'd say very useful. I'd say very useful. I'm going to give it a nine. I'm going to give it an eight point seven. Oh, thank you for under trumping me this time. Fantastic stuff. Please send in your suggestions for uh, Billy and Dom eat the world to us. Friendship Onion at Casmania.com. That's Cas with a K. And if you have a link that you can put it on there so it's easier for us to find it, please stick it on there. But it's fantastic. We're eating the world. We are eating the world. Thank you. Now, Bills, we have been sent here a wonderful song by Daniel S. from Medellin in Colombia. Oh. And this is a song by Hansi Kirsch, a German singer, songwriter, record das producer. That's good. Jawohl. And former bass guitarist, best known as a member of the power metal blind band Blind Guardian. That's a super. One of the founders of the band, he has been its lead vocalist, Kirsch, the lead vocalist. Kirsch's lyrics revolve around various themes prevalent in the power metal genre, including medieval fantasy, J.R.R. R. Tolkien, religious mythological tales and legend stories both his own and from the literary world and this is a song called lord of the rings by blind guardian wunderbar stick it in our ears jono now i'm picturing there Kind of beardy, weirdy guy. Right. In the corner of a tavern. Where? Sweden. <laughs> Lovely. The Swedish countryside. Wow. The tavern is heated by simply logs in a fire. The only thing on the menu is uh, little pieces of a dead animal. A white sausage. Maybe a white sausage. They serve ale. There's no wine. There's no cocktails. It's not that type of place. Ale. Ale. White sausage. White sausage. Homemade bread. Homemade bread. There could be a cup, a family of mice running around in the corner. Everyone's okay with it. And a large dog breed unknown. Yes, yes. And our friend, Hansi Kirsch, is sat in the corner. With a 12-string guitar. Tuning it with his back to the, to the crowd. And then he turns and says, listen to this, you bastards. And he goes... Here's a song Here's of a song many rings. 
They go, oh, did you write that? He goes, not as sir, influenced by Professor Tolkien. But this is my stool. Yeah. He says about his chair that he is sitting upon. Yeah. And they go, but is it funky? Ah, Hansi, at any point does it become funky? And he says, no, no, it is not funky. It's more of a tale, a yarn. If nine, 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 nine riders. Nine rings nine for rings for men them. doomed no. to die. No. So it's lovely, and we love songs that feature uh, Lord of the Rings, Led Zeppelin. I do. Oh, Zeppelin, uh, Zeppelin. You know, yes, I think maybe it had something. Yes, did, they? did something. I think so. Did, 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 did uh, Zeppelin do a song about the Nazgul? Yes, they mentioned so, uh, the Nazgul for sure. They mention all, all sorts. They love Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Uh, does that point? Beyonce did a song about Lord of the Rings, which was amazing. It's about, yeah, yeah. If you like it, then you should put a ring on it. <laughs> Written from uh, Gollum's point of view. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Have you seen the little babies dancing to... Uh... Oh, 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 oh. No? No. Oh, Billy. You're not often in a bad mood, but let me tell you, if you're ever in a bad mood, Google search baby dances to Beyonce, and you'll see little kids in like nappies just not being able to sit still because Beyonce's on <laughs> brilliant lovely song Daniel S. Medellin sent that from Colombia was M- Blind M- Guardian M- funky Dom Medellin 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 you should know that if you've ever watched Narcos I d- I've watched a couple alright is it funky on a scale of Brahms to Prince I'm gonna say Mozart it's good but it's not funky Right, I'll say Black Sabbath. It's got drums, but tiny, it's not funky. Tiny, like a, the hint of funk, but it's just not. A, but not really. Could be funky, but, but it's we not like, going to be. But we like that he's taken the world of J.R.R. Tolkien and he's made it his own. Lovely stuff. Thank you, Daniel S., for sending in that song. And please send in your suggestions for songs if you want us to find out if it's funky or not. And, of course, it will feature on our Spotify playlist, The Friendship Onion, which is getting larger and larger as each week passes. Like the universe. And my belly, full of (laughs) dragon fruit. Guys, we've run out of time. That's it. But please rate and review and subscribe to The Friendship Onion. And if you rate and review us, we may grab that review and put it up on our social media pages. Yeah, don't forget to take a screenshot and stick it on at The Friendship Onion. And we'll see you next week. Don't forget to write at the friendship on not at no the fr- <laughs> He does this. He does it. Hang on, his brain's exploded. He's he's. I've look given how up. sad he is I've with given himself. Up. <laughs> no, don't. Uh-huh. You can do it. Can you I? can do it. The friendship onion at castmedia.com. He's nailed it, guys. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Toodles. Toodles.